This is Twit. Let's talk about g g discrete GPUs. None of the uh, the new Apple hardware have discrete GPUs. They're all using the GPU built into the system on a chip. And according to Apple, that GPU is five times faster than previous integrated graphics, maybe fast enough. Uh, but I know a lot of people, I see a lot of people in the chat room saying, oh, they got to have discrete GPUs. Is that the case, Doc Rock? Do you think you need discrete GPUs? Will Apple support them? <clears throat> this was tough. Um, okay. We, again, we're all, let's see, shy or gun shy because of the iris and the 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 previous Intel's, integrated graphics Intel's integrated that we graphics. dealt with right so it's hard to disconnect your brain and i fully get you i'm right there with you i am a gpu intensive person i'm on a 5700 xt with 16 gigs of ram so you're going to tell me the new computer that i'm going to buy has the exact same ram as just my gpu and it's supposed to scream final cut the way that i scream final cut and yeah because it's new, it's different. It they talks to each other different. The language and stuff is different. Like it is just different. And I I know it's hard to understand, but if you are an Esau person, um, you get it because there comes a point when you pick up fluency in the other tongue, there is a spot where the switch goes from I understand, I can talk, whatever. To, I fully get it. Yeah. The concepts start to stick. The cultural reasons why we use this phraseology here and there starts to stick. You start dreaming in the language. Yeah. 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 You could actually dream in the language. Yeah. So that is a level of fluency that I don't think a lot of people understand. And it's much harder to understand if you're not, a say, a, a multilingual person. Because I think I understand this better because I can take it from the computer standpoint. I can pick up you know, my various languages and move that to computer and know that once – you get to that certain level of fluency where, yeah, you basically get angry in that language, then it runs smoother, you know? And I think it's hard for people to understand that because we don't have much to compare it to in our personal lives. It's hard to get analogous. So you're saying it's M1 as a second language. We're, we're going from Intel to Apple Silicon, yes. and it's yes. a new language. And so the things that we think about when we think about Intel discrete versus uh, uh, integrated graphics it's just not the same. Nope. And yet, if you're a gamer, I mean, unified memory alone is going to mean you don't have the same amount of memory available for graphics textures because everything's sharing that RAM and you only have 16 gigs. I, I have to think that there is a market for discrete. What do you think, Rosemary, for discrete graphics? I mean, there definitely is because they sell the external GPUs, right? Uh, so, you know, they wouldn't be selling that if people didn't need extra graphics processing that isn't available in the machine that they they want. But or will there be an eGPU e for M1, Max? Maybe. Yeah. The standard plugins I mean, shouldn't work right now. It should fight because they're different. Yeah, yeah. So it, I think, right I now think if you just should. picked up what exists, it wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, right now it's not going to work, but there's clearly a market for it because otherwise people wouldn't be using these. Oh, I um, understand the market. You bet. But yeah, that was on so, Intel. You know, that was that other language. Yeah. And it, it's definitely going to be interesting. I was very pleased that they were ta demoing and talking about Baldur's Gate today because I know that... Gaming on the Mac is a controversial subject, um, so I'm probably going <laughs> to wade into a whole pool of mess here. But, um, you know, you need a good GPU for a lot of games. Um, and you don't just need it for games. You do need it for, you know, like video rendering and things like that. But, you know, it depends on exactly what you're doing. If you are... Um, you know, producing a, a, a full-length feature film with, you know, computer graphics in every scene, um, you know, overlaid on top of things, then you're probably going to need a GPU, I would say. But I am also not a feature film producer, so I, I couldn't really say. But my assumption is we're going to see something with more GPU later because this is very much, you know, the first generation of something. Uh, you know, NVIDIA gave up. Right, they said, "I'm no, we can't uh, forget it." This and that was before this. Uh, they gave up on Apple. Um, AMD Radeons have there been a tight relationship between Apple and AMD on that for discrete graphics. Is there any room for an Apple AMD relationship, Andy, or is this is Apple just going to make their own? 
I think that they're going to move towards making their own. Um, I, I think that uh, I think that Apple makes a distinction between the sort of people that are absolutely counting frame rates and absolutely would spend extra for a GPU and the people that just want sort of normal user interface flow. They want to make Apple's going to make sure that if you want to edit, edit 4K, if you want to preview in 5K, 8K, that you will be able to scrub through and not drop frames. I don't think that they uh, that they're as focused on frame rates uh, and that level of performance for the average user as the PC community is. Although this this I did uh, also in my notes is that I think this is the first time that Apple even mentioned uh, as a as a selling point that hey you'll get those high frame rates in your games uh, that you're that you're that you're expecting so I, I do think that they were trying to make a better pitch for uh, for gamers than they ever did uh, maybe this has to do with their desire to compete uh, at this level on these thousand dollar laptops they're trying to sell a lot of these to college students to high school students and one of the things they are going to care about when they're comparing this to like an alienware laptop or anything else is how well is this going to be able to play my games yeah, and of course, any discrete GPU will be kind of at a disadvantage because it's on the I/O bus. It is it is no longer unified memory access, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a it's gonna be a mess. It's gonna be yeah. interesting to see this. We probably underscores the fact that these first three uh, M1 based Macs are kind of low end, and that the Pro stuff is still. They may call it a MacBook Pro. It is not. The Pro stuff is still to come. And that's we're going to have to just see what Apple does in, in response to that. I can't. And, and I, well, you have to remember too, Leo. The Xbox 360, the Xbox One, the Xbox S One. All of the Xboxes have been um, basically using UMA from from forever. That's right. Right. Xbox 360 is 2004. Right. <laughs> so I'm saying, like, we've <laughs> been doing this for a while, and so it freaks. It, it's funny that everyone is panicking about this, but the console system's been doing this for quite a minute, Be so it's not yeah. new. because they're running on AMD. I mean, AMD's been about UMA for a while. Uh, yeah, and they use graphics. They use discrete graphics. Uh, but it's tighter. It's a tighter integration than putting a PCI card in. It's got to be, I think you're going to have to buy it. I think you're going to want to buy it from Apple. It's going to be an Apple technology, I think. PCI has probably also gone now, too, like in the way that we know it, right? Um, yeah. Because uh, most of what you need PCI for is in that graphic you showed us like 20 minutes ago. It's all in there. Yeah. So, although yeah, they say they support PCI, the fourth generation PCI, I'm not sure. Uh, that means there's a bus. There is a bus somewhere. Uh, I don't know what the bus is, where the what the bus is connecting to. Uh, Instead of being I mean, if like it's a like UK bus six of them arrive at once. Here it is late. somewhere. Yeah. 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 Instead of being a Trollways or a Greyhound bus, this is one of those where the rock, you know, guys got like six people and a big car table, microwave, two sleepers in the back. Is that kind of bus now? <laughs> uh, note, note, very notably, none of these Macs have slots, have any uh, upgradability at all. So uh, what you see is what you get, and so there's no no question there. Um, I'm be, I'm very curious what this is going to mean, but that's why this is the beginning of a process, and there are going to be many more yeah. um, announcements. And uh, in theory, I guess you could use Thunderbolt four or, or USB four for uh, something. Yeah, I, I think know. that's why a lot of people might consider holding back. Because the great th the great thing about RAM on a lot of different systems is that if you underbuy, well, you can. If it turns out that you do need more, you do need that 32 uh, gigs of RAM. Okay, fine, buy another couple sticks, put not it in. Here. It's easy enough to upgrade. Mm -hmm. But yeah, exactly, not here. It makes me wonder what they're going to be doing with the Mac Pro line, uh, given that the whole the whole concept of of the return to like the classic style Mac Pro was we we're giving you we're giving you a rectangle just like you asked for. We're giving you places you can put RAM in, we places you can put uh, storage in. If they're going with the unified memory architecture, if does that just apply to this one, uh, this first M1 chip, or does that mean that all future Macs going forward are going to have some form of unified memory, and that a memory upgrade is going to involve having a CPU upgrade? And if they decide to take the memory off of the off of the die, are they going to have a situation where uh, they're going to be giving up a lot of the fast RAM performance that they're getting by having this all on the same SOC? 